Hello, and welcome to Timing is Everything, a program of Care Dimensions. I know you're not used to seeing us on location, but we are so thrilled. We're here on location today at Diamond Brook Farm in Boxford. I am so thrilled about this. And we're here with Laurie Lowe, and uh, we're here to talk about minis with a mission. So, and so Laurie, welcome yeah. to the show. Thank you, Mary, so much. I'm so glad that you guys are here to join us today. Oh, we're thrilled. Yeah. And I'm gonna tell you, this is our, our we've only done a couple of shows on location. Yeah. So this is uh, this is our second one. So this is, this is really fun. Super. So I want you to tell us a little bit about yourself, Laurie, first. Sure, sure. So Mary, I'm um, a pharmacist by training and I work in a global um, pharmaceutical company and I live in Ipswich, Massachusetts. Fabulous. So Minis with a Mission, how did it come to be? Oh boy, Mary, um, I have quite the journey that has brought me to Minis with a Mission. Um, starting off with, um, in October of 2019, I um, had a knock at my door um, informing me that I had a donkey in my front yard. And that is, that little donkey that I'm talking about right now is um, Bucko. He's my miniature donkey that showed up in my front yard. He found me, is what I say, um, and led me on this journey. He eventually was taken um, back by his owner that same morning when his owner found him. Um, but several months later, I had been looking for an opportunity to do something good in my community, volunteering, something where I can make a difference and meet people in my community. and. I saw that a rescue needed uh, volunteers. And I was like, I need to listen to what this little guy was telling wow. me. And so I said, that was, that's my calling. Isn't that fabulous? And, yeah. And so I went to the rescue. I was able to find him again. I literally got in my car, drove around and found him again. And the owners, knowing that donkeys need companions and he had lost his companion, um, they said, if you can bond with him, you're welcome to adopt him. Oh and my so- gosh. So hence, here I am with, with Bucko the Miniature um, Donkey, and I later was able to adopt his girlfriend, unrequited love girlfriend now, <laughs> a Flossie. Um, and at that rescue, I met a wonderful lady, uh, Marianne Hartman, and she is a Swampscott native. She had been working at the rescue with her three miniature horses, Romeo, Fluffernutter and Pixie. I love the names. And, uh, yeah, I do too. And she'd been taking them out into the community and taking them to memory facilities and assisted living homes. And the response with that human equine connection in those moments just really drew her in. And I sort of experienced that as well with my donkeys. Wow. Um, and so we were on board together and we formed Minis with a Mission with a lot of volunteers. Um, we are an all volunteer nonprofit organization. We just got our 501c3 this spring. Wow. Um, even though we've been doing this for about six years, we are now official and we are ready to go and, and spread some joy with our, our minis in the that, community. Oh, that is fabulous. And we're gonna get into that more because mm. I wanna talk about the impact and all. Yeah. But I also wanna say that uh, we had the good fortune of having you and minis with a mission at the yeah. Kaplan Family Hospice yeah. House uh, not so long ago. That's right. And and the, the patients there and the families of the patients responded amazing mm. they it was something that was really very profound for them yeah and um when it, obviously we don't disclose names and things like yeah. that but um what i was told too is that one individual actually had a form of alzheimer's and that this person responded amazing mm. and had just such an amazing positive uh, reaction yes. to the mini horses and the other thing was uh, that we had another person there who um actually had visual deficits and uh, so she couldn't see the horses because she was she was blind. Yeah. But she actually sensorily that she was able to touch and to actually interact with the horses, and that that was an amazing experience yeah. for her as well. Yeah, I mean, Mary, that's so great to hear that feedback because we don't always get to hear the follow up of the experiences. We can see from our end what happens, but we don't always get to hear those wonderful stories, and and we hear that all the time. I mean the. These animals, one of the things that I fell in love with Bucko, he taught yeah. me in the, in the moment that you have to be present. Yeah. You have to be in the moment. And I love your timing is everything. Yeah. What, what lesson he taught me that, what the, the best, the most, excuse me, the most important time is the now. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what Bucko's taught me, being in that corporate environment where I'm on a go, 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 go all the time. He taught me that lesson of, being present in the moment. Yeah. And I think that's what these animals will do. Yeah. 
um, when they were at that hospice, you could see that it really gives comfort to a lot of people, the family members and to the patients to be able to just forget about everything yeah, and just be in the moment yes, and enjoy these wonderful animals. And, the, and your point of the tactile, that's just the feel of these animals, their softness. Yes. They're, yeah. I mean, they have the most velvety noses that yeah. you can ever yes. experience. Um, so yeah, so that's wonderful to hear that that experience happened with, Absolutely. with people at your facility. You know, and I, it's it's amazing because there there I, I had said when I first got here I was going to kind of try to keep a little bit of a distance because of my <laughs> allergies and things like that, and then I said I can't keep my hands off of them, <laughs> which know. and I love animals, but it's amazing. And yeah. again, I think that yeah. that's a reaction for not just me, for most people. That's I true. also that's love true. when you are talking about the experience with the donkey in your yard. Yeah, boy, uh, talk about keeping our our minds and our hearts open for mm. things, and uh, how again opportunity and uh, how things can take us a whole different journey. Yeah. You know, I really do believe he came into my life for a reason. He's taught me so many things. Yeah. And I've realized that in our interactions in the community, that these horses, we work with them. Yeah. They don't work for us. Yes. They're, we work with them yeah. and they teach us every single day. And every time we take a, a journey with them, we, we learn more and more. So that's, that's fabulous. It's wonderful. Yeah. Tell us a little bit. I mean, here we are. We're at Diamond yeah. Brook Farm. Yeah. Right. So talk a little bit about oh, that. Boy. So I don't know how we got so fortunate to find Diamond Brook Farm, but um, Diamond Brook Farm is a family farm that's been in existence since the 1950s. There's two sisters, Renee Cooper and Erica Cooper, that have brought this farm back to life. They lost their parents tragically um, about six years ago, I want to say. Um, and um, they decided they wanted to bring this whole, this whole place back to life. So, um, we found them as a boarding facility. Um, I love being a part of a journey of mm. a growth for these people that are passionate as much as we are about the human equine connection. So, so here we are, they're kind enough to host us today and um, join us and Minis with a Mission in our journey as well. Yeah, and, so. and I have had the, the sheer pleasure this morning of, of talking with Renee. The passion is, it's, it is, it just, yeah. it, it's unbelievable. Yeah. And I'll tell you, this is a place you've got to, you've got to get in touch with. You've got to get in touch with you guys about Absolutely. this. Absolutely. This is powerful. It I is. Mean, it's contagious. It you is. You know, that really the passion <laughs> and the compassion that you guys exhume yeah. is unbelievable. Yeah. So talk a little bit more here about the yeah. Minis with a Mission now, because uh, now we got, we got donkeys going on here yeah we got mini horses we do talk about that and and how they again they work how they impact people all of that absolutely okay so um yes yeah, so minis with a mission as i mentioned is a is a all volunteer nonprofit organization and our mission is to provide the opportunity for everyone to have an opportunity to experience a human equine connection their healing and the, the joy that they bring and so um we have our donkeys, Bucko and Flossie and Pearl over there. We have some mini horses here. We have Ginny. And um, we also have three other horses at another farm. Um, there are mini horses called the Romeo Fluffer, Fluffernutter yep. and Pixie yep. that are there. So what we do is we look for um, opportunities to just have outreach in the community. And that could be things like assisted living homes, hospice care, um, libraries. Um, anywhere where there might be an opportunity to spread joy, which we all know we need yes. right now. Yeah. Um, and um, so the fascinating thing about donkeys and horses, which is really can explain a lot of their healing powers. I mean, the joy is obvious, right? They're adorable. Yes, they They're are. majestic, beautiful animals. Yes. Yeah. Um, they have this really gentle temperament. But the healing part is fascinating. If you think about the natural... Um, living situation of a horse, right? And their history. So horses are um, prey animals, right? Horses and donkeys. When I say, when I say we always kind of refer back to just horses when we're referring to donkeys too, but they're prey animals. So what that means is they are very astutely alert of themselves and the environment around them. So what does that mean? That means that they can um, really sense everything that's around them in terms of energy and feelings. Mm. So we know that in the wild environment of, um, that a horse can actually hear the heartbeat of an attacking predator over two football fields away. Wow. Now in an environment like this where there's more security and safety, yeah. 
they can hear your heartbeat four feet away. Wow. So if you come into their presence and you are anxious or you're sad or you are nervous or you're mm -hmm. angry, they will pick up on that. Wow. And the one thing that horses and donkeys need the most is safety. Mm -hmm. So for you to interact with them, you need to feel calm yeah. and help them feel safe. Mm -hmm. So they really become what we call like a window into your soul. Wow. And so they can teach you a lot of things. Like if you're, if you need to relax, they can help you to relax because that's how you're going to interact with them yeah. and connect with them. Yeah. And so they communicate with each other in their herd through non, through the nonverbal communication, mainly mm -hmm. through body language. So you can start to look at these animals and you can really see when they feel safe. Yeah. And then you can also see when they don't feel safe. And so that helps you to learn to adjust how you're feeling too. Wow. So they really teach you a lot. Yeah. We temper and, our emotions based on it. What yeah. was interesting is, so that again, you could see them. They were just kind of all over there. Mm -hmm. Very curious, very, yes. uh, but they, they seem very friendly. They're really super wanting friendly. to interact, to socialize. They're super, they, they are very social animals. In fact, donkeys um, very much so bond with another animal. Mm -hmm. and they generally need to be with another donkey. They can bond with other animals too, but they like another donkey. And then horses are herd animals, so they definitely have a social structure mm -hmm. um, that makes them feel safe and comfortable, so yeah. And you've seen them, when you've had them out at, at the hospice facilities, mm -hmm. uh, when you've had them, again, at the assisted living, that sort of thing, what, what have you seen in terms of the impact that they have mm -hmm. on individuals and on the groups that they're? Yeah, so I mean the biggest, um, well gosh, so many things, right? But I think um, comfort mm -hmm. is really one thing. They, they um, are different animals mm -hmm. when you bring them to hospice. So when we're at hospice, they might be a little frisky on the way getting there, right? Um, and Ginny's wanting, to, wanting some How attention there. How are you? There. Yes. Um, but once you get there, they seem to know that they're there for a job and they really pick up on the emotions yeah. uh, and what someone needs. So. They uh, bring that comfort of just being near them, being in their presence and helping you to self-regulate your, yes. your feelings. Yep. Um, comfort is huge. Laughter, joy. Mm -hmm. That's yes. big. Yes, in those moments is. where you, you need, you're under a lot of stress, they, they bring a lot of happiness. Yeah. And that's the thing I, I really have sensed, even just being here with mm. you for, for this hour or so that we've been present with you, is um, I, I'm going to tell you, I, I just feel very relaxed yes. being out here. Uh, it may, and I've been smiling the whole time. Yeah. It's just made me very happy. Yeah. It just, it does bring a lot of joy. And that's, mm. you know, when, when people talk about hospice, oftentimes they think, again, it's it's such a difficult time. Obviously, people are dying. Mm. But really, it's the focus is not around death it's around helping people to live fully for whatever time they have yes. left and i feel like this actually kind of fits right in there in that in that area it as well. really does and it coming back to that point of um helping someone be present in the moment yes yeah and thinking of the now it it will take you away from what's happening yes. around you in the world and have you be present yeah and and enjoy that interaction that the animals may have with your family member or that if your family members need a moment of time away and comfort. They have that with the minis. Yes. Um, so the um, when you how do you how do people locate? How do they yeah. get a hold of you? How do they know like this is something that we need? Yes. This is something that's going to help the people that we're caring for. Absolutely. So we have a website called Minis with a Mission, and um, that's how you can locate us on Google. Just do a Minis with a Mission search. We also have a Facebook page. Um, and we also have Instagram as well. If anyone's interested in that, we're trying to um, reach as many people as possible. Um, we have on our Facebook page, it tells you, excuse me, our home page, our website, it will tell you um, how to reach us. Yep. Um, you can email us at aboutminimission at gmail.com. Okay. Right? Um, and we also have on our page a, um, what's happening. So you can see what events we're doing in the community. So. We even go out to fun community festivals with the minis to bring joy. Oh, um, so reach out to us. We bring the animals um, to places. We also have the animals or have people come and see the animals here at the farm. So they can do it either way. They and, can. And certainly, can. you know, like with, with the people that we're caring for, are harder for that to happen. So you can either go to them or they Absolutely. can come to you. Absolutely. Excellent. Yeah. Yes. That's wonderful. Yeah. So the um, so tell us like again this this distinction. So would you how would you choose like or what's the difference between a donkey and a mini horse? Ah, so um, 
they're they're basically different animals, mm -hmm. right? So a, a donkey, you can see physically, they're a little different. They've got the longer ears. Yep. They have the longer the um, little different shape of their face. Um, the, we have donkeys that are miniature donkeys mm -hmm. that are just smaller in size. And you can see Flossie and Pearl are more of a standard size donkey. Yes. Um, and then Ginny being a, a mini horse, she's under 36 inches is kind of what they say for a, a miniature horse. Their personalities are a little different. Um, they, they're, they're both equine, so they have that safety first mentality. Yep. But donkeys are a little more about self-preservation. So sometimes they're used for livestock protection okay. because they are, have a natural enemy, uh, a coyotes oh, and that sort oh, of thing yeah, in the, yeah. in the, that are their prey of. Um, but they are can be very vicious <laughs> with a coyote. Wow. And that means sometimes with dogs as well. Really? Um, oh, wow. Bucko could care less about a dog. Flossie is um, someone that would slowly um, attack a, a coyote or a dog. Wow. Um, but the donkeys are super smart and they will think before they do anything. Uh -huh. So you'll see that when you guys came in here, um, surprisingly, Flossie was laying down sleeping on the ground while we were walking around her. So she felt very safe with you guys. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but they generally, if you ask them to do something, they will think through it yep. before they do it. Yes. Whereas a, a mini horse, they uh, react a little quicker uh -huh. than a donkey. Yep. So they get a bad rap saying that they're stubborn. Yes. But they're actually super smart and they think before they go and do something. Yeah. Yeah. So with, is a mini horse, you said 36 inches. Yeah. Is, are they, are there any that are small? How was the smallest that you can get a mini horse? Um, oh, they have like even smaller, super small wow. ones that I think, um, I mean, they're like the size of a dog, like a yeah. really small dog. Yeah, yeah. You so, might have wow. seen some of those cute little yeah, videos. They, they yeah. can get really small, yes, can't they? Yes, they can. You don't ride them. <laughs> you know what? You can. You can. You can ride a donkey. There are. Um, she. They need to be trained uh -huh. to do so. They don't have as smooth of a gait, depending on the donkey. I've seen some donkeys that have a really nice gait, but uh -huh. um, these guys, you wouldn't want to ride them. Yeah. <laughs> but with the and the mini horses, though. You wouldn't. So you can ride mini horses. In fact, Romeo, our mini horse, can be ridden, and we have a lot of kids that will come and ride him. Uh -huh. um, and he's actually um, rides really well. A lot of kids um, have a lot of fun with Romeo. Yeah, yeah. Have you? What are some of the reactions that you've seen again from people? Um, like I said, we're working with people mm -hmm. at Endelet, but we also have people uh, again with a variety of different illnesses, yeah. and, and some being a various type of Alzheimer's. Or, yep. or the dementia, that sort of thing. But th for a number of different reasons, they can mm -hmm. be on our service for many medical issues. Yeah. But also you're talking about uh, there's work that's being done with other types of groups as well. Yeah. So, I mean, we have have um, we have volunteers who have need some help with um, some of their social skills. Mm -hmm. And um, they come here and amazing things happen in terms of their self-confidence and their communication skills. And we have some... Um, amazing stories with with those folks. We also have some schools um, that have come to us with um, kids that have been autistic. Yep. And we have had those after event stories where we've had some kids that have been autistic that have never spoken that spoke when they were in the paddock for the first time. Wow. Um, so we work with kids that are at, at mm, risk. Yeah. Um, so kids that really need that help with anger management maybe or anxiety and trust, yep. and these are wonderful teachers for, mm -hmm. for that sort of population. Um, so really, I mean, humans need to connect right. and, and feel, be happy, and, and we all have ways that we need to heal. So really, any, any population and every population, we say, could benefit and enjoy. Yeah. Well, when you think about pet therapy, to tell you mm. the truth, you're not thinking horses. You're not thinking donkeys, right? You are not. Uh, but again, you, you're really enlightening yeah. us today of really how, again, you yeah. should be thinking along these yeah. lines, and you can be. And I'm sure you have people, again, like uh, that, and we certainly do, like we'll have patients that one, some of their passion has been mm. that they may have had a horse and this and that, or and we get this with dogs too. And, yeah. and, and when they're at end of life, they, they really want to have that connection. And Absolutely. maybe their dogs, maybe not there anymore, but they're they're asking, and looking for that animal contact. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, we have people that do, they they brighten up and they will share, oh, I had a horse yeah. when I was growing up or I had a donkey. 
um, when I was growing up and they would tell stories and they lighten up because yeah. of those wonderful stories because they've experienced that human equine connection over a long period of time. So I can see quite... where this would also elicit, so that there mm. we come into eliciting more like even around life review and, and other yeah. memories for people too, Absolutely. in addition to the hello, <laughs> in addition to everything else. Yes. It, can, it can do a lot of that as well. It absolutely does, it, it, it absolutely does. Um, so, I mean, really the way that they can identify and feel what is around them they, they give you what you need yeah, in the moment. Yeah, and it's yeah. very, very um, something that I experienced that I was like, wow, I got to be a part of this. Yeah, this yeah, is great. Absolutely. So are you, in terms of like, are you available like weekends, days, that sort of thing? Yeah. Like if people call you and say, listen, yeah. we want to we wanna have our loved one come and have this interaction or we mm -hmm. want you to come to us. How does that? Yeah. So we um, are all volunteers. So we are available, um, we make ourselves available upon request. Okay. So if people contact us through our, our e either email about mini mission at gmail.com yeah. or on our website, uh, which has our contact information, um, we can arrange what works best yeah. for an individual or facility and determine if it's best for we to, us to go to that facility or for them to come here. Yeah. Um, so we, we make it work out. As, as much as we can and and we need volunteers yep anyone who is passionate about handling the animals and coming with us on events we welcome anyone for that nice um and anything else for a nonprofit that a nonprofit needs that yeah. um help with social media that help with fundraising that help with organizing events or the paperwork and donors and that sort of yeah. stuff um so so you do a little in, do like a little orientation with them around the animals and all of that and we help do. them to feel comfortable and be we a part. We do. We have safety is really important for us and for the animals as well as the community. So we have an orientation program yeah. for our volunteers, which covers a lot the history, some of that behavior, what what those what the animals are telling us yeah. with yeah. their body language, um, safety and how to handle them. I'm yeah. um, giving them experience. We train them yep. um, as well to be feeling safe in the community yeah. in the different environments with with uh, wheelchairs or with balloons or that sort of yeah. thing, flowers. Yeah. I mean, they can be, um, they're very observant and curious, so they yeah. will, will notice everything. That is so, great. Yeah. So what is, so I want to make sure we get to cover everything today in terms of the yeah. things you want to share with the audience, yeah. because again, I mean, there's so much to talk about with this, but mm -hmm. are there, is there anything that we didn't cover that you really want to make sure that the audience understands mm -hmm. about the minis and, and the mission too, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, um, I guess the, some really important things is that we need support um, financially for us to be able to run our programs. Yep. And so we can, um, we accept donations of all kinds. Um, we accept, we have an uh, Amazon Smile account where people can contribute financially through joining us, finding our charity on Amazon Smile. Very good. Um, we look for support through our volunteers that join us. Um, and then of course we take financial donation, you know, um, donations as well. Um, and you can find that on our website as well. Yeah. Um, and then uh, we'll be having some other fundraising events coming up. So we have um, some pet and play um, opportunities here at the farm where we're gonna have some books with Bucko, our little guy here, and have some um, places where people, the little kids can play and enjoy the farm animals. Oh, that's great. And um, we're gonna be auctioning off a helicopter ride. We have oh, wow. a... Um, Renee Cooper, our husband um, of Renee Cooper, is a pilot. And wow. so we're going to be auctioning off a yeah. helicopter, a seacoast helicopter ride with him. And so we would love to have people come and bid on that. And that's going to be over the next couple of weeks. Wow, that is fabulous. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, I, I hope people have watched the show and I hope that they learn all about this and that they contact you around Minis with a Mission. Yeah. And I hope they also contact Renee um, from Diamondbrook Farm because this is amazing. It you is gals are place. unbelievable. And again, clear how, how much you care about this and, and yeah. what you have to offer people. So I hope again that people reach out. Perfect. So I, I want to thank you so much for being a part of this program today and, uh, and welcoming us. And thank yes. you. You know, I'm, I'm 
I'm saying hi to Renee in the background because <laughs> I welcome you know, to be a part of this and to be here uh, on awesome. your wonderful farm. And, and thanks so much well, for we, talking about it. We what love you do. sharing these animals, the joy yeah. with everyone. And I think we should now go in and play with that. I know. The I animals. think so too because they, they <laughs> certainly love the attention, I'll tell you. Oh, uh, this is great. Thank great. you very, very Thank much. Thank you, Mary, so much. And, and again, thanks everybody for tuning in to Timing is Everything and, and being a part of this special program out on location at Diamond Brook Farm in Boxwood, Mass. Thank you so much.